Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, and this is my review of It Chapter 2, the sequel to 2017's It, which both are based on the Stephen King novel It, which is quite lengthy, hence why they decided to split it up. I'm going to do this in two portions, right? So the non-spoiler section, which is going to be this at the front, and then I'm going to get into some spoilers, which I'll make sure to denote so that way, if you haven't yet seen the movie, you make you can make sure that nothing's spoiled for you. So, first off, this movie is almost three hours long. It there's definitely stuff that could be cut, um, but at the end of the day, I appreciated most of it. Um, I think if if it trimmed down just a little bit, it could have gotten it down to even two hours and thirty minutes. This, the middle for me did drag a little bit, but overall, I thought it was an enjoyable movie. You know, uh, the first movie was all about the kids. This movie is about the adults coming back and dealing with it, and you get a lot more of the backstory that you didn't get in in the, the first movie. And when I say the backstory, I don't mean about the kids. I mean about it and where it came from and so forth. And that obviously leads to how they can potentially defeat it and so forth. Um, what, what's kind of interesting is it, it's a movie where I would say you can't see this movie without seeing the, the first one. And yet, a lot of the things that happened in the first movie are quite inconsequential. Which is kind of like a weird paradox for me to say, but but I do believe it to be true. The only things from the first movie, and um, it's just minor spoilers if you haven't seen that one, but uh, is the promise they make to each other and sort of the introduction of it and what it represents and how uh, it affects the entire town of Derry. Obviously, you get to learn the characters and so forth, but again, it's, it's ironically not as... Con it, it, you don't... It's weird because you don't necessarily need... All the things that happen in the first movie aren't fully required for the second movie, which is weird. And, and um, it's a problem that I've had with the book as well, um, but the book sort of manages to go in and out between the two, whereas with the movies, they decide to you know split it up quite chronologically in the sense of you get in chapter one, you get all the kids stuff, and then in, in this chapter two, the new one, you get all the adult stuff, and so forth. So it's kind of a weird dichotomy in that way. But um, it is as such. So overall, what do I think of it? Uh, I thought the, the moments with it weren't as scary as some of the moments that were quote unquote real life threatening. There's a scene at the very beginning that is essentially what he, what he how it affects humans. And so then it's the humans inflicting something against um, you know, people, and I thought those types of scenes worked were a lot more horrific than the CGI monsters, if you will. But of course, you know, it man, slash the CGI monsters and the clown and so forth. That's the crux of the horror in terms of what this movie is presenting. So, so the real life stuff wasn't as prevalent, um, but it was sort of more in the background. Anyway, uh, you know, I appreciated the acting of, of each of the characters. I thought they matched their counterparts from the first one very, very well. And overall, an enjoyable movie, a satisfying movie, although as I get into spoilers, I do have some nitpicks, but I also do think that it stems from the source material. Um, I, I'm sort of hit and miss when it comes to Stephen King. But overall, I give this movie a seven out of 10. So um, if you have yet to see it, go see it. <laughs> um, it's one of those movies that it's always tough to talk about because of its title. Let's see, right there. Anywho, so now as far as the spoilers, let me get into it. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest things is the, har the hardest thing to grasp with it is sort of the logic. I mean, you know, you, you get the scent it's established that it is an interdimensional being and so forth and that it preys upon the fear of its victims but in terms of how it does it and the logic of that isn't always evident because 
it, you know, the, the biggest criticism, even going back to it, chapter one, is well, well, why couldn't Pennywise just kill any one of them at any certain point? He sort of toys with them, um, and I know he toys with other other um, victims, but he obviously eats those victims. Whereas with with with, with um, the Losers Club, he sort of lets them live and off the hook, they just kind of run away. Um, so you kind of have to suspend your disbelief in, in that regard and. You know, I, I, I always had slight issue with it, but that's kind of any horror movie, really. The other aspect of it is, you re, I, I, the, again, it stems from the source material, but the, the memory aspect. They arrive in Derry based on this promise, yet uh, the only one that really knows of Pennywise is Stanley, hence his, his, his death. Um, so when they come to Derry, yes, there's there's trepidation. I mean, by God, the opening scenes were quite incredible in terms of how they reacted to getting that phone call from Mike. But it's interesting that it's only when they go to Derry that all of a sudden it's like, oh, Pennywise, oh, 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 oh. Um, when, based on the reactions, I would have thought that that is why they had those reactions because it brought up, you know, they don't have to have all the details, but the idea of like just dealing with Pennywise and the scary entity would have just brought that fear and, and you know, closed off the door um, to, to the uh, mental memories, if you will. But um, it is as such, and so uh, there you have it. Now, the reason I said in the non-spoiler section that the middle drags is because, of course, they're having to get their t um, tokens to initiate the, the ritual of Chud. Now, couple problems there for me. Uh, number one, we don't necessarily know what's at stake. I mean, in terms of the ritual of Chud, I know that there's this idea that they have to stick together and so forth, but I, I wish it was front-loaded a little bit in terms of what this ritual is and why these things were so important. Then maybe it would have given that whole middle chunk a little bit more weight. Because as it happens, we don't necessarily know. We know that they have to remember all these things, but it's just kind of a tell not show and i know even in my description of it they, it would just be mike telling them the importance of why um but um but maybe they could have illustrated that a little bit further in the hallucination with bill and mike in terms of what the ritual is and why they needed certain uh, these tokens specifically but as it stands they each of the characters goes off on their own adventure and this is what i appreciate is that we do get these flashbacks but they're not of the same thing that we saw in the first movie so it, it enhances the story so i do appreciate that the problem is the stakes aren't as high because when the adult character goes in there and we're seeing the horrors of you know 27 years ago well we know the outcome is that whoever it is they survive because the adult is right there now when the monster comes out for against the adult version then yeah uh, th th there's that scary aspect to it um, so i think they could have done a little bit better of a job um meshing the the, the threat levels if you will with that because especially you know when beverly says i know how each of you die that, that that's kind of um ever present in at least in my mind as i watched it and and i watched each of these adults go in no knowing that Stanley already had passed away. Um, so that that's kind of my biggest nitpick with the middle chunk. And um, I, th I think, you know, ultimately it's, it's kind of like they get the tokens and, you know, sometimes they, they get the tokens and then the bad stuff happens versus they essentially, as adults, have to battle it to get that token. So, for example, with... Um, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Um, uh, Bill Hader's character. Well, I, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. But with Bill Hader's character, he, he gets the coin from Street Fighter. And that was very easy. And then he has to deal with Pennywise scaring him and so forth. I, I think they, they each, almost it should have been like a quest to get the tokens and then run away from Pennywise and so forth. But it didn't happen. So it is as such. But I do appreciate that at least the flashbacks themselves revealed new information. Uh, I, I have to say, really quickly, one of my favorite moments of the movie was the Stephen King cameo. I thought that was brilliant. 
I, I think he acted very well, so I, I truly appreciate that moment. Um, so there was a, speaking of uh, flashback moments, there were, there was a point in the movie when Mike says uh, he they're they're at the um, the underground base that they, that they had made up um, that Ben had created for them. And they were kind of discussing, well, we, we already remember everything. And Mike says, well, not everything. And for a moment, for those of you who've read the book, and, you know, minor, uh, spoiler for the book, but um, it's something that's been talked about very heavily and openly. So, um, you know, I don't feel necessarily bad about revealing it. But in that moment, I thought they were going to go to the child orgy scene. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, in the book... As kids, they get lost in the tunnels after they defeat Pennywise, and so in order to remember how to get out, they essentially have an orgy, which it sounds crazy, uh, but it's supposed to represent them going from childhood innocence to, to adulthood um, and so forth. I mean, there, there's a lot more to it than that, but simply put, that's what it is. And so in the movie, when Mike says, like, well, you don't remember everything... <laughs> And I thought that that's where it's headed. Now, thankfully, it never went there. So, so thank thank you. I, I appreciate that we never did the child orgy. Um, but you know, in terms of other nitpicks for the movie, I thought the Henry Bowers, <coughs> excuse me, storyline was was underutilized. And in the in the book, Tom becomes another threat. So uh, Beverly's wife. Or not Beverly's wife, Beverly's husband from the beginning that we see that's very abusive, that's much like her husband. He plays a role. In fact, um, Audra, Bill's wife, uh, the actress, she she sort of gets apprehended by Tom. And it's all these things, you know, it's Henry, Tom, and Audra all converging in at the same time and, and you know, presenting challenges to our Losers Club. The only aspect of that that happened in the movie was Henry... Which I felt sort of let down by because in the beginning, you know, um, at least with Bill, you know, I, I, I get from from the perspective of Beverly why we would want to see that, that she's kind of married her husband, which then leads us into the love triangle and ultimately the happy ending with her and Ben. But in the case of Bill, you know, I, I appreciate the I found the joke very funny of like Bill can't write a good ending, but to have him and the director and, and his wife and that whole scene... It just made it all the more unnecessary and we could have truncated that because it never comes back into play. You know, I thought they were setting up Tom and Audra specifically because I knew from the book that they had a larger role to play towards the end. Again, didn't happen. Now, as far as Henry Bowers, you know, he was supposed to be... This was this was supposed to be his revenge. And we, we sort of get two relatively quick scenes and, you know, it, it never really amounts to much. And, and so I felt... It's a shame because he was so heavily underutilized, whereas in the first movie, he's such a big threat, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, and I think I think they could have utilized him right to the bittersweet end of, of this whole thing. You know, right when, like, it is being destroyed, uh, you know, maybe that's when Henry could have came out of nowhere again and, and prevented something and got, something could have gone wrong and... You know, it and Henry could have been working together, but they chose not to do that. In 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 that sense, it's fairly straightforward. You know, I thought for a moment, because the movie was so long, I thought when they were performing the ritual of Chud, that it it was kind of coming to an end. I thought it would just legitimately kind of just they would perform the ritual and that be it, which would have been obviously very lame. Um, thankfully, that doesn't happen. But but then the way in which they ultimately defeat it. Uh, I don't know, wasn't as fully satisfying to me uh, as I would have hoped. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how to fully explain it, but but it just, it's just, like, the movie's ending was very, very satisfying to me. Like, I appreciate them going to uh, the quarry and swimming and the way they look through the window shop and see their reflection and see, and, 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 and um, you know, if you really think about, like, Stanley's letter, it's basically... An admittance to like that his suicide was warranted which has issues in and of itself but but overall at least like the, the sp 
spirit of what it was trying to do was very sweet. So I thought that aspect of, of all the losers and, you know, sort of moving on, I, th I thought was handled very nicely in terms of how they defeat it. Um, you know, it, I, I think it could have could have been played a little bit better but overall you know like i said i give it a 7 out of 10 um i know i've, I've nitpicked a couple of things but that's because i wanted to open up the door if you will so we can discuss it i would love to chat in the comment section more with your thoughts on the movie um but these are these are my various thoughts on the movie but overall you know enjoyable and uh i would actually i would encourage uh, the entire filmmaking team to try to assemble a more back and forth version of it. I, I, it would be very fun to see what they could do with what they already have and create like a super, super cut of this, you know, that's, that's six hours, incorporate some new footage, but at the same time go back and forth more like the novel was. Um, so anyway, I'm curious to know, A, have you seen, uh, ha have you read the book? How does it compare for you? Um, and if you haven't, you know, were you satisfied? What are things you liked? What are things you didn't like? Um, so let's talk. Bye for now.